The split back gun is one of my favorite formations because it presents a multitude of challenges for a defense to account for. Whether you're using a fullback and a running back, whether you're using two skilled players and no fullback, there is something for you from the split back gun. Let's dive in. So we're gonna start in 20 personnel right here. We have a true fullback at the F and we have our running back at the H. One of the things I love about facing two high defenses is we get this even box. So it really opens up what we can do with our fullback, especially in the zone running game. So we're gonna start with zone lead where we're running to the left here. Our tackling guard would be solo on the three and the five. Fullback would lead on the play side linebacker combo to the backside and lock up on the end. A lot of these were gonna be six for six. So with almost all of them, we can throw the glance off of the X. And we can do this with outside zone, wide zone. We can do it with inside zone, tight zone. Doesn't matter, we're just talking regular zone here. The same concepts apply. So we have zone lead on the play side linebacker. We can also lead on the back side linebacker. So we're gonna take the nose to the play side linebacker and bring the F back across for the back side linebacker. Generally, I like to lead on the play side linebacker on a perimeter zone play. And I like to lead on the back side linebacker on an interior zone play. Now the other option we have with our zone is to completely run split zone where we're gonna take the backside tackle and bring him up for the linebacker as well and bring the fullback all the way across to sift that defensive end. Again, we can do all of these with inside or outside zone, doesn't matter. Now the other thing that we can do with zone, we're not gonna be able to RPO on the backside here. What we can do is run same side zone. This would want to be inside zone here. We can run same side inside zone. Just keep the fullback backside for the defensive end and run same side inside zone with the halfback. And this really demonstrates one of the things that I like about split backs specifically. A lot of times if we're thinking 20 personnel, especially in a, a high school offense, the fullback is not going to be all the way in the backfield is going to be uh, in that sniffer position. And I think this sniffer position is not very good for the offense. I think it really puts offenses in a box because it almost tells the defense, hey, we're either gonna run power right here or we are gonna run split zone. The best way to avoid that idea is either using same side runs frequently or just bring the fullback back in the backfield. Now let's talk about some gap schemes. First is we can still run power. The fullback does not have to be up in that sniffer position to kick out the defensive end. There's no rule against that. Sometimes the angle is better as far as being able to dig him out. But also, again, if we're keying to the defense that we're running power, it's pretty easy to spill. So again, the fullback can take out the defensive end. You know, offenses have been running it with the fullback in the strong and the play side offset eye for centuries. So if, we, if they can do that, we can still bring the fullback from the backfield to kick out that defensive end. Gonna take the three back to the mic, wrap for the play side linebacker. And again, we're running to the play side here. We can still RPO off that safety. Sticking with power, we can also run power read. And this is one of my favorite ways to run it. So we're still gonna be blocking power. Instead of kicking out the defensive end, we are going to read him. And instead of that, the fullback is going to fake like he's gonna block the defensive end. He's gonna go block the safety instead, put the X on the corner, then the halfback's gonna have the jet read, and the quarterback is going to run the power based on what this defensive end does. Does he come to tackle the running back? Quarterback then runs the power, and there should be nobody left to tackle him. And if the defensive end squeezes the down block, the quarterback gives the halfback, and we are off to the races there as well. Sticking with gap schemes, let's talk about counter. Now with a fullback in the backfield, a lot of the times we're gonna be thinking GF counter. And from split backs, I really like to do this same side. So this really helps key that tendency running away from the fullback is running same side counter. So especially with a B gap bubble sometimes in a defensive end like this, I like to stab the defensive end and then get to the wheel. We got plenty of time. That sometimes helps that end from squeezing all the way down. Take the guard solo on the nose, 
Lock back on the three. Guard come kick out the defensive end. Backside tackle's locked. Then the fullback is going to step up, follow the guard, and lead up to the hole. And there are two things that we can do with the halfback right here. Number one, you can have him drop step and get downhill. The other thing we can do is have him come all the way across, stick his foot in the ground, and get behind the fullback who's getting behind the guard if you want to get some more misdirection involved. So that would be GF counter. We can also run GT counter and we can do it both ways. If we wanted to run it to the right, again, we'd stab that defensive end and get back to the wheel here. Back call for the center blocking back on the three. Guard's gonna kick the end, tackle wrap for the mic. Here we would have the fullback just sit and wait for the defensive end and this would be same side GT counter. And then one of my favorite plays in football, uh, I've heard it called the modern day Sally from the wing tee. I've also heard it called crisscross counter. We're gonna run GT counter back the other way. The fullback is going to fake the handoff and come back across for the defensive end. Halfback might take a stab step for timing and then come back across and he's gonna run GT counter back the other way. All right, now let's say that you don't have a fullback or you are somebody who doesn't want to use a fullback, but maybe you've got two skill players on your team that you really want to get the ball. Split backs is also a great way to do that. Your F can be anybody. If you think about the Shanahan McVay offense, the F for the 49ers is Kyle Juszczyk when the fullback or Jawan Jennings if they're in 11 personnel. And then the Rams is generally Cooper Cup. So you can do this with anybody. This is a great way to bring an extra playmaker into the backfield and do some different things to get in the ball. Now, the great thing about having two playmakers in the backfield is truly the threat of a run to either player. Normally, if it's a fullback, the defense probably isn't going to be worried about him getting the ball, even though he's in a position to receive a handoff. But if you have two dudes on either side, then one of the challenges for the defense is they have to be fully aware of the quarterback player on both sides of the offense. Normally, a defense can just key, okay, the running back's here, so if the quarterback pulls it, we have the Sam for the quarterback player. But now, the Sam has to know that he's a quarterback player if the quarterback opens up this way, and the free safety has to know that he is the quarterback player if the quarterback opens up this way, assuming they're playing quarters. And if it were cover two, it would be the corner as the quarterback player. So again, we are gonna treat this like we have two playmakers in the backfield, two running backs. It doesn't matter which one we're gonna hand the ball off to. So let's say that we're gonna run zone right with our F right here. Not really differentiating between inside outside zone, so we're just gonna step to our gaps here. We're gonna read the defensive end for a give or pull read. And what we can do from here is put the H on the slide route. So we're gonna fake sift this defensive end and continue on into the flat. And he's going to be the pitch read. Now, one thing that I see a lot is the quarterback is not a running threat on this play. If the quarterback gets what would normally be a pull read, he just throws the flat to the H right here. But for me, the best way to do it is to make this a triple option play where the quarterback is also a running threat. And that's why I picked running this to the single side here because we have a quarterback player that we can read. So normal rules for me, this is a zone read play for the quarterback. So the X on the back side is just gonna block the corner, meaning that the free safety would be the pitch key. So how this would operate is the quarterback is reading the defensive end first. If the defensive end sits, then the quarterback is just gonna give the ball to the F and we're gonna run five for five on the zone play. Y is going to try and cut off the Sam. Z is going to try and cut off the strong safety. But let's say the defensive end crashes, squeezes what looks like a down block. Then the quarterback's going to pull it and get eyes on the free safety. If the free safety plays the quarterback, then he's going to throw it out to the slide route of the H. If the free safety takes the slide route, then the quarterback is going to pull it and run to daylight. Now a key coaching point here is make sure that the H is behind the line of scrimmage just to avoid any uh, illegal lineman downfield penalties by catching that ball behind the line of scrimmage. If that becomes an issue, uh, we can also do it more triple option-y style and bring the H back across to where he's in a true pitch relationship 
versus being in that forward position on the slide route. Now we can also run a similar play off of GT counter. Against this set, I'm gonna prefer this with the quarterback running to the twin side. So we're gonna run GT counter to the left, put the X on the free safety because he's on the play side. This would be for the halfback to run the counter, the F on the slide. Here we'd have the Y on the strong safety, Z on the corner. We would read the end for the give keep read and then the Sam for the pitch read. One of the issues we've run into running GT counter read like this is the Mike linebacker. So what we'll get a lot is a scrape exchange between the defensive end and the Mike linebacker. And that is the one thing that really kills this play. So if you're getting a scrape exchange there, then definitely would want to stick to zone. But if this Mike is going to see that guard pull and scrape over the top, then this is also going to be a great play. Another one of my favorite plays with this being two playmakers is the power read shovel. Maybe the best goal line play in football seems like it always scores when executed to perfection. And one of the beauties about having two playmakers in the backfield right here is we can run it either way. So we'll run it to the left first. We're going to run power left. Guard's going to wrap. Backside tackle hinge in here. We're going to read the defensive end and the free safety. X block in the corner. And I like the triple option version where the quarterback is also a running threat. So the F is keeping a pitch relationship with the quarterback right here who is running straight at the defensive end. We have to make the defensive end make a decision here. Is he going to play the quarterback or is he going to play the running back who's kind of hiding behind this pulling guard? So if the defensive end plays the quarterback, then the quarterback is just going to shovel it to the halfback who's going to run right behind his guard and is going to score if it's on the goal line happens all the time you can see it in almost any saturday now let's say the defensive end squeezes that down block quarterback's going to get outside and now we are attacking the free safety even if we're five yards down the field as long as the f is in a good position we can still pitch this ball if the free safety takes the quarterback then he's going to pitch it if the free safety takes the f then the quarterback is going to continue on now, like I said, we can run this both ways. So let's flip and run this to the twin side. Here we'd want the Y on the strong safety, Z on the corner, and we are reading the defensive end to the Sam, just like we did on that GT counterplay. Mechanics are gonna be the same. The H is gonna be in that pitch relationship. Quarterback still attacking the defensive end. Now the F is the one who is running behind the guard. So there is a base run game out of split backs and it's going to be impossible to tell which direction you are going to run with it. We talked about inside and outside zone, we talked about power and power read, we talked about GF and GT counter. But it's not only about the runs, another great thing about split backs is passing. And what passing can do is we can decide from split backs, do we want to run a two by two concept? or do we want to run a three by one concept? We can create either post snap when we have two backs in the backfield. If we want to run a three by one concept, we've got our H, maybe we want to run a Y corner. Now we can keep the F in pass protection. If you're a six man guy, put the X on a post backside or something, some kind of alert. But the issue for the defense here is that they may not be prepared to defend a three receiver concept at the snap because we don't technically have a trips flank. Now, another option is we can create a two by two set. Maybe we want to run something like Y cross. We'll take the X on the go. We can put the fullback out in the flat, bring the Y on the cross, Z here. We can bring the H in pass protection and then on the burst into the flat later in the down. Number one, the free safety, if we're looking middle open defense, doesn't really matter whether it's quarters or cover two right here. He's going to be helping the corner on the go, leaving a lot of empty space here for the Y, if we even make it there, because the will has to cover the F to the flat right here. So if you've got two playmakers in the backfield and you think that your F can win that route to the flat, then that's going to be open all game. And if it's not, then you get to your third read, which would be the Y cross. And that's gonna be open probably because this free safety is gonna be vacating that space. So from split backs, we can run it either direction. We can create 
three-man passing concepts, we can create two-man passing concepts, and lastly, we can create empty passing concepts by getting both backs out of the backfield and running our scat pass protection. A really good play with the twins to the field right here is going to be the ever-popular mesh rail, and we're gonna get a double rail right here. We're gonna get both rails out of the backfield, the F running up the sideline to the boundary, and the H running to the field. Gonna get our Y setting the mesh, our X coming underneath it. Then the Z, we could either run mesh rail dig, or we could just put him on the over the ball. Either way, we have the triangle between the rail, the mesh under, and then the over the ball. But when you think about mesh, we're trying to attack the interior of the second level right here. The Mike is gonna see his back run out. The Will's gonna see his back run out. And we should see a ton of open space right where we're trying to attack. If you've enjoyed the video so far, leave a like. Let me know in the comments down below if you like gun split backs and what you like out of it. One last thing that we can do to mess with defenses is use a little bit of tear motion right here to create a four by one, a quad side. And in this next video, I'm going to tell you about some passing concepts you can use out of it.